All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Jerry here. And we're super excited today on the Llama Index webinar to bring on a guest. Uh, his name is Sam Yu. He's a co-founder at the Honorable.ai, and he's here to tell you all about the challenges of building a legal chatbot. Um, so just to start, uh, maybe Sam, you could give a quick introduction. Oh, hi, I'm Sam. Um, I'm currently working as a software engineer to, uh, because the recent explosion of the chatbot LLM. So I decided to use my knowledge of building a chatbot that's focusing on legal uh, matters, especially for, let's say, the Supreme Court, you know, um, decisions, opinions. I know because of the recent decisions, there is a lot of interest in those fields, but there's not much um, resources that can be easily accessible to people without the legal background. That's a super interesting and relevant use case. And um, yeah, maybe to give some context, would you be able to describe a little bit about what you're building? Okay, so basically um, the first um, iteration is uh, quite simple. I'm just pulling from all the like legal opinions from the Supreme Court, um, dating back to basically the first um, I think 19, I'm like 18 something, you know, um, and the, all the uh, legal documents that's existing in the PDF files on the Supreme Court website and the Library of Congress. So getting all those information together and making, like doing some um, extracting data extraction, pre-processing metadata embeddings, and then feeding that into the embedded into the LM model. And then, so when the user, when asking any questions, it will be accurately retrieving information regarding um, like their queries. Got it. Is the end user UX just to allow users to understand Supreme Court cases or are there other additional kind of like high level goals that you have in mind? Uh, this is just the first iteration. It's beginning just as a chatbot for users to understanding any question they have interest in the Supreme Court. It can be either you can can be a lawyer or you can be a layman that works both way but down the road i do plan to adding let's say the transcripts the audio files or like other um let's say the um, the law the code itself embed into the host um the lm so it, when the user asking question it will retrieve more relevance their query and the result sweet that's awesome um, and then maybe just to dive into the nature of these documents a little bit more, can you, can you tell me a little bit about like the format of like a Supreme court case and, and, you know, what is the overall structure of this data? Across like over 200 years, there are so many different formats of the documents. Then when you have the more modern documents, which is pretty much like very nicely formatted in the PDF files. But then we, once you go back to, let's say, pre-1980s, then you have a lot of documents. It's kind of the scan of the old paper documents, which is sometimes it's not very nicely formatted. And it has a lot of, let's say, handwritten like on some of the documents. And so it can be like kind of tricky. And when sometimes they don't scan it really well, so you have this like missing pieces here and there, or they're just like, it's just like maybe it wasn't preserved well. So it can like having when, so once you do this conversion from the PDF file to the text file, it, sometimes it can having lots of like, um, um, like extra artifacts or there's a missing pieces here and there. And, or also the, um, the document text was not recognized well. Got it. Um, what about like the nature of the text itself? Uh, I think you mentioned, um, Briefly, like there's, you know, there's probably like different judges, like writing, like concurring opinions, dissenting opinions. Like what are some of the like processing challenges there? Um, because the formatting, the formatting documents itself, because as you said, there is a the basic, you have the opinion um, that basic the majority. Um, so you have a, a judge writing the, um, the opinion pieces, and then you have the additional judge write, maybe writing concurrence to the opinion pieces, but not the same as opinion pieces. And then you have the descending judges. Um, there could be multiple descending. So in one PDF, you might have different, basically uh, different pieces of documents. So how are you going to, because when you're processing the um, um, basic PDF as a document, you might put them as a metadata. If you put them metadata altogether, they may not reflecting what the judge, like basically, let's say Judge Sotomayor said, it's maybe different from what the Judge uh, Roberts said. Mm -hmm. But in the metadata, it may not reflect that. So in order to best have your accurate, you know, um, like response, you want to basically 
um, separate them into different pieces. But at the same time, you want to have the metadata that's kind of really reflecting on like which each judges stands on these cases and to have all the information that's really available when you do the retrieval. Super interesting. So basically, you kind of want to associate, you know, the relevant text and opinions with the relevant judge who, who's actually associated with this specific uh, section, right? Because you could have yeah. like multiple judges each writing their own opinion on the case. Yeah, and there's some like really, um, I I wouldn't call it uh, edge cases. So there's um time then when one judge agree with one piece of opinion, but says, okay, but I agree on all the opinion except the first sentences. So like, okay, so mm. when you retrieve those, how are you going to process that one sentences? So I that's, see. yeah, but this is H cases. Like I haven't found a really good solution yet, but this is just something like need really need to think about it. How to, like when you do the embedding, how you process these documents. Gotcha. And, and maybe just uh, the overall idea of just like, you know, how do you assign like a, the, the text uh, to, to like a person? What are some of the processing strategies that you have tried for that? Because that's pretty relevant, right? Like even if you process like a chat history, for instance, it's a different use case, but it seems pretty relevant. And in this case, you know, it's a Supreme Court opinion with like a bunch of different opinions floating around in the document. Yeah, so I've been initially I would just uh, straight processing the documents without considering too much into it. But mm -hmm. once I get into the details, though, I've been using like basically NLP instead of the LLM, just using NLP to extracting basically the judge's name like from the text itself, and then basically assign them in based on their whether they're descending or concurring assigned to each pieces. So the NLP was one way of doing it, but because of sometimes the edge cases, um, so some document does not work well with NLP. And so mm. I've been discovering using, let's say using GPT-4, it's like, it's really good at the classification. So you can mm. basically do zero shot of prompt, basically just giving the whole chunk into uh, chat GPT-4, and then it will tell you like category, who is descending, who is agreeing, who is like concurring, everything I see. very nice. I see. So you actually, you do yeah. like, you use GPT-4 to actually process the document and then to, to actually extract like relevant metadata uh, that you I then just use give like a piece index. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just give a piece of it. So basically it's like the self-coring, basically retrieval, just extracting the entity given on the conditions. Got it. And then you then use this like process information and then you like store this information uh, in like a vector database that you use for later retrieval. Yeah, exactly. And I've, I'm trying to get additional doc, additional metadata from the core website to understand like what's this case for, like what's the area of interest, like uh, what's the you know the basically the the prior, um, let's say the lower court, which lower court is from. So these are data going to be added into the metadata as well. So when you do a retrieval, you can basically asking like give it more keyword. Let's say you want to give it more keyword to more precisely to locate where this case, like whether it's relevant to your interest or not. Gotcha, that's awesome. I think, you know, if you're interested in contributing uh, a Supreme Court case loader to, to Llama Hub, which is our site for just like data loaders for LLM apps, I think that would be awesome because this seems like a pretty relevant and useful, like, and, and kind of like domain specific use case, uh, right? And, and for like Supreme Court cases, there's like a certain way you can like process, extract this information to create like a nice document representation. Yeah, definitely. Once I'm finishing, basically finalize my end of like how to best processing these data and put them all together, definitely I'm really interested in like contributing to the Lama index. Sweet. Uh, no, that's awesome. And and maybe um, the step beyond this is now that you have this document um, and you've extracted some of this information, uh, what is like the the way you're representing the the document? Is it like you have, uh, is it still as like text chunks and you have metadata for each text chunk or are you thinking about a slightly different approach? Um, so basically I'm processing, converting the PDF into text file and then, you know, um, making some ad additional adjustment to processing and then putting those metadata into the document file itself. So this way it will be basically, um, it will keep along within the document file. So when you do the retrieval, it will be still there. Got it. And so you're basically inserting the metadata into the file and then yeah. uh, storing that somewhere. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, what is the later part of your stack? So what like kind of vector database are you using? And then how are you doing uh, initial retrieval? Uh, and then how are you thinking about some of the like failure cases of like the initial like uh, like retrieval stack? 
Yeah, I've been testing all kinds of uh, stores just to try to see which one has the basically best uh, use, um, best um, like match for my use case. I think each store is very different these days. Let's say I'm, the current one I'm picking is Weebie because Weebie had this hybrid search method. You can providing it with keyword and then doing basically the query. So this way it will be more precise because the metadata I'm embedded. So I definitely wanted the retrieval to have a more precise outcome. Got it, makes sense. Uh, maybe uh, for hybrid search, just thinking about semantic search, um, did you try that? And then what, if so, like what were some of the failure cases of it? Uh, it sometimes it doesn't capture everything because um, like when you do a semantic search, let's say if your sentence is having multiple judges, sometimes it doesn't really, you know, um, sometimes it doesn't like capture well, which one is like basically who is the most prominent in the sentences. I and see. yeah, so does, does that change even after you have uh, added like the metadata about like the, the speed, the, you know, the judge corresponding to each piece so, of text? Uh, so basically when I'm, I'm pulling out those judges, I put a weight on the, um, basically on the judge. So the, the one that's appearing the first have a higher weight. So like basically that's the person who wrote it and the other is agree within this, the, the first judge, judge. So this way I'm looking at basically, I'm telling the, the data to like focus more on the first judge. I see. Yeah. I see. And was that the solution that you had to kind of make sure that fetch is more relevant stuff? Or is this like, even with that, it was still uh, fetching irrelevant information? It's, it's, it's like, I will, it's not hundred percent working. Sometimes, sometimes it works well, but sometimes it doesn't. That's the the thing. Like, it's like it, I wish it can work hundred percent of the time, but it doesn't at, at this time. I'm trying still trying to figure out how to like basically maybe adding more metadata, but at the same time, I have to be aware. User may not put in a very long queries. Uh, user may just put in very simple sentences, and they want to get the best results. Got it. Makes sense. Um, and, and along those lines, uh, you mentioned you, uh, uh, the user might, uh, enter like different types of queries to ask these types of questions. What are, what is the class of questions that you're looking to answer? Uh, and could you give some examples of the, of those? Uh, let's say, um, I wanted to know, um, whether like, uh, let's say judge, um, um, judge Kavanaugh has wrote anything about a specific, like interstate commerce. So, so that will be, so first it will process the query to pick out, okay, so this, um, the area of interest, interstate commerce, and the judge is Kavanaugh. And then, so you put these two into the, basically the keyword, the uh, keyword search. So mm -hmm. to reflecting, to retrieving the relevant document, then mm -hmm. you can do either re-ranker or like um, doing other or processing to then you do the basic, the query retrieval, the embedded retrieval to pulling out the relevant information. Got it. Have you noticed a substantial difference between um, once you go from just like pure top K semantic search to adding in some sort of hybrid search keyword filtering component? Oh, it definitely increased uh, the accuracy. It's not 100% there yet, but it definitely like basically pulling, let was say the early on was by maybe like 30%. And then now it's come, you can get to like maybe 60, 70%, you know, higher uh, score. Super interesting. And, and maybe just for our listeners, could you give a sense of like what exactly hybrid search is doing in this case that will help improve the accuracy? Uh, so basically, because um, like I said earlier, when you have the metadata, so when you're looking through those metadata, so the first step is going to basically just doing a metadata um, to finding that documents that embedded with those metadata. So it will do the first retrieval, getting those documents back. And then the second process is doing the, basically uh, using a query to do the embedded a retrieval to finding from those documents to getting more relevant information instead of just in going through everything or you're getting through on the summary of your documents. Got it. So it's a way of like increasing the precision of your retrieved documents uh, right. because like without the metadata, maybe you're getting back stuff that kind of matches like the semantic search part, like the embedding similarity, but you're not necessarily getting back documents that fit the keywords. It, exactly. Got it. Got it. Um, the other part that you mentioned is this idea of like a second stage, like re-ranking uh, module. And maybe uh, uh, have you tried that? And and if so, like, uh, could you give a description of like how it works and the stuff that you tried? Yeah. So basically, so first um, I've tried that, but the result is kind of mixed right now for me. 
but mm -hmm. I'm still kind of in the process of refining, trying to find a like basic sweet spot, how to best use it. So basically when you retrieving those documents first, and then through the re-rank the score, uh, each document you have a score, and then through those score, basically you put in the more relevant document first, mm -hmm. and then you doing the more on um, the second, the embedded retrieval the, from the core reads. Oh, I see. So you're actually doing some sort of, um, uh, are you doing the embedding based retrieval first or as a second stage? Um, um, I forgot no, my pipeline. So um, I'm doing, I think I'm getting the embedded retrieval first, you're re-ranking, then you do and go through the prompt. I see. Yeah. And, and then you use the L1 to, to do some sort of re-ranking. I see. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Um, cool. Um, taking a step back, what are what are your kind of like favorite PDF OCR packages? Like what 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 are some existing parsers that you think are are pretty good? Uh, I think personally, if you want to do a local, um, like Tesseract, probably the best. Mm -hmm. uh, I can even give you guys show some example. Let me share my screen. Sounds great. All right, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so basically this is just a testing of uh, some of the documents um, I'm processing. And you can see on the right is the one of the Supreme Court opinions that's from the 1968, which you can see is a scan of the, the paper documents. Oh, nice. It's literally just like a, a scan, right? And yeah. then, okay, all right, okay. yeah. So you have the handwritten all over the place. You have some like basically having the with the watermarks. So it's it's everything everywhere, and it can be really confusing for some of the the PDF loaders. And I can just show you guys. This is the result I got from this first one is from the Tesseract. So the result, as you can see on the left, it's not too bad, but some some of the word definitely is missing, and it doesn't really know exactly what they're looking at. And then okay. I have. Yeah, another one is the PDF minor, uh, dot six, and it, it does some well, as you can see, the first sentence is the Supreme Court of the United States as um, the um, the Tesseract didn't like, it picked up, but it has more text on the top. So, you know, each document is different. Each par parser is different. So sometimes this document will work well with one thing, but not well with the other thing. So mm -hmm. let me show that this is a more worse example. It's a, called uh, PYPDF2. So it gives out something, but it's just like, as you can see on the bottom, it just like, it doesn't work well. Oh, interesting. So yeah. this is like, it's trying to do OCR over this document, right? Yeah. But maybe like the bottom, like the characters are just not, you know, like in the right format. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm currently this, I want to show you guys one method I'm using to clean up documents is using GD4. So I basically feeding the document of scan, basically the OCR text into mm. GPT-4 and ask it to correct it. And it actually does a really decent job. As you can see, it pretty much capture everything that's on the on the page, even though I don't know, but I don't really know if GPT-4 has this document in this training data or not. So, but this is a very impressive result. It doesn't capture everything. Let's say the one thing I think it's missing is the page number. Mm. It doesn't, doesn't have the page number on there, but it pretty much captured the essence of the documents. Really This nice. is awesome. This is a great, um, I actually think this would be a super useful notebook to, to share. Yeah. So yeah, this is one way of processing document, but because GB4 is so costly, it may not be feasible mm. to run like uh, your entire document basis, but it can be something that you to think about it. That's fair. I think yeah. even just a basic comparison of, oh, I see you have all other PDF libraries in there too. Uh, yeah. Like uh, if you just have a comparison of all the different PDF parsers and just to, uh, showcase some of the text, I actually think that would be like a great comparison tool. You know how like there's um like nat.dev for, for like uh, LLMs so you can compare like the inputs and outputs of different LLMs. Right. So like yeah. same for PDF parsers, just like throw in different PDFs, take a look at how the output differs. Yeah, um, definitely. I actually think that would be a super useful tool. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I can show you basically this is another thing you want to think about the tables. So a lot mm -hmm. of PDFs have tables, but it doesn't really process well. Let's say I'm using PDF minor. It basically, it does extract the, the text, but it's kind of just like, it's not really useful. Like mm -hmm. if you're just putting them into LM, it may not process really nicely, which I ran into that problem a lot. So you might want to like change it to into a data form, um, the data frame. So this way you have a more structured data. And you can use, there's so many packages out there that you can process the, the um, 
like the data frame very nicely with LLM. So this is something that you might want to think about it when you're running, um, let's say, just a table PDF. So yeah, there's... oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so so yeah. is this like th this uh, um, table parsing that you described? It's for like yeah. parsing tables within a PDF, right? Yes. Yeah. And and for other texts, like, can it does it parse like hybrid data or only P uh, tables within a PDF? Um, I think this is mainly just basically it only extract tables. It doesn't like work. It doesn't take out the text. But I think, uh, well, I'm kind of still in the research field, like trying to find a mix parser. So put everything together, like basically extracting table and extracting text and put them all together at the end. Yeah. So how that's a that's the next question I was going to ask, actually. If you think about a PDF, it has a lot of like unstructured text uh, and you could get that from like OCR or just like the text directly in the PDF. And it also has uh, structured data. How are you thinking about like, you know, uh, creating a unified document representation that contains both elements or how are you thinking of like merging the structured unstructured data somehow? I'm thinking you probably need to have a mix format. So you have the data frame, let's say, or um, CSV format, and you have the text format. So it's just, you have to, but I mean, I'm trying to struggle in how to like reference the other documents in your document. So they know what it, where those information is located. So I think that's the issue I haven't really worked out yet. I see. So being able to like reference other sections within the document. Yeah. And model those right. relationships. I see. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. And the lastly, I just want to like showcase real quick, basically like handwritten, um, like PDF. Sometimes it doesn't work well. Let's say the first one, the PDF finder, it basically, it doesn't recognize any text at all for some reason. So if you having a large, uh, basically you're processing hundreds of documents at once, and you may not even realize you have missing documents sometimes because it just, some of the parser may just doesn't process at all. And uh, some parser process well, and let's say the Tesseract does a, a recently decent job. And it's, there's just so many like benchmark people out there, just like handwritten, like category handwritten. It just like mm -hmm. something, sometimes they just like do it very poorly. Some of the parser, it just doesn't process as well. And if your company or your organization have some kind of documents, you might even want to consider training data so they, the, um, the parser can understand your data uh, way better than the existing parsers out there. I see. So this this is uh this is like a public benchmark or did you create this? Oh, this is a public benchmark. This I is see. A, got it, got it. I found, yeah. So it's like comparing the quality of like different kind of like OCR tools like across yeah. different like categories of data. Um, yeah. Uh, could you help like maybe just like distill those results just a little bit more like kind of what what are these okay. tools doing so, well and where are they yeah. not doing as so, well so the um the category one is basically random P uh, wikipedia google search so it's like very clear um html format even though it's saved as a pdf file so they still i believe they still retain uh, retain those texts very nicely so pretty much every parser out there can like getting those texts like close to 100 percent accuracy but the problem starts when you do uh, dealing with the handwritten, which is category two. So the handwritten, like I'm showing the example, some parser just doesn't do it. Well, like basically do it very poorly. Let's say um, this Azure parser is like blowing 20%. And the others, um, like Abby is about like 50% and you have a higher rate with AWS or and uh, GCP. And so like it can really varies. So you mm -hmm. have to be very careful about which parser you're using when processing your hand, if you, your documents containing any handwritten information. Yeah, wow, the, the discrepancy is like huge. There's like GCP is like pretty good and, and yeah. uh, Azure is pretty low. Yeah. Got it. Um, it. It seems to me there's like an interesting challenge with OCR itself where like if it's well formatted, it seems to do pretty well. And then handwriting just seems very volatile, right? And, mm -hmm. and then just like that creates a lot more variability in the performance. Yeah, and uh, you have to consider your company's form may be different from uh, like existing the training data they have in those models. You may that that's like create a cases you might want to train your own data, basically your models to having a more accurate uh, representation when doing the parser. Awesome, this is great. I think the um, next question I was just wondering is you know there's a lot of these PDF parsing and also OCR packages. Uh, and tools that you've uh, played around with. And, and this is a great analysis. Is there anything that you wish that these PDF parsers had that that just don't exist right now? Um, I would consider it's 
it's like basically it has to be a la carte. So it has to considering, let's say some of the PDF you download from internet may have a security um, like setting in it. So you mm -hmm. your parser, uh, default PDF parser may not um, like basically process, of, like may not be able to bypass those security. So that's one issue you might have to face. And also the second is basically if your care, if your um, parser has a, like a lot of uh, images or tables, how does that being processed? Maybe it the Tesseract or other parser can like really parsing those uh, straight uh, text PDF really well. But once it's encountered those mixed um, data the PDF, how does like how to handle those uh, information? I think that's a key. Gotcha. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And and kind of looking more broadly at the overall like kind of LLM based retrieval augmented generation applications that you know that your application uh, also falls in this category. Um, what are some of these like challenges that uh, you're like you think still exist, and and what are some like potential exciting future directions that you're excited about that you want to tackle? Uh, I think the specific domain uh, processing, document processing is still kind of lacking because all the document, all the basically existing product out there is mostly tailored towards um, like we can process any documents, but um, it fails at like if you're having a more mixed format documents or if you have a foreign language, sometimes it just doesn't process at all. Like I've tried some like um, uh, parsers, it just doesn't handle like foreign, let's say Asian language as well. So this is something mm -hmm. that definitely needs to be considered when you're doing those, uh, like basically a document processing. Got it. So like multi like multilingual capabilities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like more specific domain, like more, let's say you want to just process a transcript or processing um, uh, like a Supreme Court uh, opinions, like or a core document. So those has to be like very specific domain. It may not work well with the like the basically current, the PDF parser that's in one of the packages. Mm. And on the LLM side, like, you know, you talked a little bit about like kind of uh, like two stage re-ranking, like hybrid search. Are there any other potential directions that you could be interested in exploring uh, just uh, uh, beyond kind of like some of the uh, existing like hybrid search and re-ranking directions that you've tried? Um, I think it's just more distilled into like basically how to, you know, parsing the query. I think that's another key to how to to pick up real information, like basically, I think the process of how they using LLM to improving the core uh, query qualities. I think that's something that I'd really need to look into it, see what can be done and to improving basically be beyond the limited information that's been provided. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Well, Sam, thanks so much for being here today. And uh, I think this is a really educational podcast for me. I learned a lot about PDF parsing, a lot of the challenges, and it really does seem like to really build something useful, this really is like one of the key things that you'd have to solve for kind of like your domain specific chat app. Uh, so uh, it was great learning about some of the, uh, the thoughts that you have on this area. So thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jerry.